ladies and gentlemen a brand new face to face with the developers just dropped on the official rise of kingdoms discord so today we're gonna go over everything because there's a lot to get into here and this always has really strong implications for the future of the game but first what's going on guys cheers before we jump in if you appreciate breaking news for rise of kingdoms drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it'll get this video out into the algorithm and consider subscribing because about 69 percent of you guys are not subscribed and we're so close to 80 000. okay so here we have our good friend a goose saying hello everyone welcome to another face to face with the developers in this face to face with the developers we'll be looking at some of the more hotly discussed issues in the community thank you to everyone who reached out to us we hope we'll be able to answer your most burning questions once again if you have thoughts don't hesitate to voice them in the community so give them your constructive feedback and keyword there is constructive okay jumping into question one what are your future plans for armaments we plan on adding a new armament conversion feature in January of 2025 so that's literally like uh five weeks away maybe eight weeks away at max this feature will allow you to spend materials to convert existing armaments into new ones making it easier and more cost effective to develop new formations without starting from scratch for example you can convert the wedge armament honors of the pantheon into the arch armament emblem of the north once converted the armaments rare and special inscriptions will be in adjusted to match the new formation the higher the rarity and number of inscriptions the more items you'll need for the conversion the required items can be acquired through kvk events and in-game bundles if i'm understanding this correctly if you look at the wedge formation the honors of the pantheon is the little emblem down here okay it's the bottom left corner and they're saying that you'll be able to convert it into emblem of the north which is part of the arch formation okay so it looks like you'll be able to convert that specific slot of armament to any formation specifically which I think is super interesting right if you have really strong armaments for wedge formation for example and then they release I don't know a commander that does maybe mighty healing and then you want to go all in on the circle formation well now you'll have the ability to actually convert a really strong armament that you already have to that new formation the real question is how expensive is this going to be and what types of materials is it going to require because it says spend materials but I don't know if they mean like existing you know like the materials we use to craft gear is that what they're talking about or is this going to be a brand new type of item right because I think based on what I'm reading here it says the required items can be acquired through kvk events and in-game bundles um which you know of course you can already get regular materials through these ways but it sounds like this might be a whole new type of item for this conversion feature so we'll have to wait and see for when this comes into the game but I think that this is all in all a very good change I think a lot of people have been very frustrated with the you know the release of a new formation and then commanders that might have synergy with it but it's like you just spent the last year you know getting really good wedge formation armaments and so like you feel really bad about that so this is amazing I'm really happy to see this hopefully this is accessible to all players free to play and otherwise with that being said let's move on to the next question here it says can you add the ability to revoke vacation permits after launching the vacation permit feature we noticed some permits were issued by mistake in an upcoming update we'll add a revoke option allowing Kings to cancel a permit any time before it takes effect what's more we're adding a new perk for governors who are on vacation if you have a vacation permit you'll now need fewer password pages than usual to immigrate to other kingdoms okay so this is really cool um I I don't know a ton about the vacation permit feature I mean obviously we've covered it here on the channel and I know a lot of people are very happy about it I didn't know that it was being issued out by mistake so if that was a big problem then that's amazing and also giving the ability for players to migrate more easily is also really really cool so um this is a, objectively this is a great this is a great thing as long as it can't be abused then this is good I didn't know this was a problem but if they're saying it was then it was and uh, I'm happy to hear that okay next up this is a long one it says the threshold for becoming an Imperium Kingdom in the season of conquest feels way too low are there any plans to adjust and this is a question that I feel like a lot of players have been talking about in the last few months because that ceiling just keeps getting lowered and lowered as more and more kingdoms are like removing troops and things along those lines so to help lower ranked Imperium Kingdoms in the season of conquest maintain a healthy population we'll be making some changes to the rules in a future update the cap on same season immigration for Imperium Kingdoms will be reduced to 150 governors per season I don't know what it actually is 
is today because I'm not in an Imperium Kingdom. We are adding a new Kingdom power threshold. If an Imperium Kingdom's power drops below this threshold, its Imperium power cap will no longer be fixed to 35 million. The number of Imperium Kingdoms in the Season of Conquest will remain the same. Since the international and China servers have different ecosystems, we'll set separate Kingdom power thresholds for each. Currently, the Kingdom power threshold is set at 23 billion for international servers and 24 billion for China servers. These adjustments are just the first step and we might fine tune them further. Once we finalize the changes and release date, we'll notify everyone via an in-game mail. So again, full transparency, I'm not in an Imperium Kingdom and I don't know the current meta for managing an Imperium Kingdom. Okay. So if you are the king of an Imperium Kingdom or leadership or whatever, let me know in the comment section below if you think that these changes are going to be positive for your experience as an Imperium Kingdom. I would love to hear from you guys because I definitely, I have at least noticed right that some of the you know lower tier imperiums you know them being classified as imperium in the same bucket as something like 960 is like it's like night and day right it's not even close so we'll have to wait and see how this actually affects the game but hopefully it makes it a little more a little bit more balanced in that top 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 tier power bracket moving on this says players are abusing targeted immigration to enter new kingdoms will you fix this targeted immigration was originally designed to help returning players find kingdoms where they could thrive and reconnect with the community however some players have exploited the feature to gain unfair advantages making life harder for native players in new kingdoms this goes against what we intended in version 1.0.89 scheduled for mid-december this year we'll be tweaking the rules for targeted immigration so that it better serves returning players while minimizing disrupting uh, disruptions to new kingdoms and this makes complete sense right um i think that if your account is five years old and you take you know six months off or three months off or something like that um your your account is still in a really good position compared to somebody who started playing the game you know 10 months ago um and so you know i do think you know as much much as you know, some older players like to immigrate back to other kingdoms or younger kingdoms or whatever so that way they have that advantage it definitely makes the experience worse for those native players and those newer players and you know that's just not it's just not good for the health of the game in the long run right so i know this might upset some players but the reality is like the new player experience must be protected at all costs and that means that you shouldn't be able to just beat them up whenever you want so makes sense to me i think that you know this was also the case when they started restricting immigration back to season two and season three of kvk uh, there was a small handful of players that were very upset about this because it kind of ruined what they liked to do which was beat up new players and it's like bro like it's like a world championship fighter getting into a, a boxing match with like a middle schooler like it, it, it's not it's not supposed to be like that okay so as much as this might upset some people i think again the new player experience is top tier for the health of the game in the long run next up will the passport page automatic restock feature mentioned in the last face to face with the developers cost alliance credits is the stock of passport pages shared between all alliance members okay we apologize for not previously clarifying the details of this feature and for any confusion it may have caused here's a clearer breakdown of the feature and this is very good i know we we talked about this in a, a recent video and then it just didn't drop right and so people are like what the heck where, where is it in the alliances with a member limit of 100 or more a weekly limit section will be added to the alliance shop this section will be automatically restocked with a a certain number of password pages each week this process won't cost any alliance credits alliance members can purchase them using individual credits any unpurchased passport pages will be stored in the alliance shop but there's a cap on how many can be stored the stock of items in the weekly limit section is exclusive to each governor other alliance members purchasing items will not affect the stock available to you this is so good this is literally like base best case scenario right this is the best case scenario and i hope that if this goes well they will expand this to other things in the vip shop because this is so good okay basically what they're saying is every week the uh the the alliance shop will get some number of password pages in the sort of weekly sh limit shop right and the stock of items in the weekly limit section is exclusive to each governor so you don't have to be online at reset to gobble them all up for for yourself right um, this is going to be, according to this, every Alliance member will have their own limit. Okay. So other Alliance members, members purchasing items will not affect the stock of to you. That's very, very good. This means that you are guaranteed every week, a certain number of, you know, uh, passport pages for your account, assuming that you have the Alliance credits to spend on it, which 
I mean, you, you should, right? There's really nothing else to spend those credits on and you're able to farm these credits basically with Ethelflaed, right? Which is super exciting. Next question. Will there still be the commander swap event mentioned in the offline meetup? If so, when will it go live? Our plan for this event has been finalized. It'll be launched in a future version rather than adding a direct commander reset event. We'll be granting each participating governor two commander swaps at a certain cost. Each swap allows you to choose two commanders with some exceptions and swap their levels, skill levels, and star levels to help new players catch up on developing their commanders before entering the season of conquest. We plan to launch this event in new kingdoms around the end of season two of the lost kingdom. Each character can participate once. In addition to this, we'll be introducing other events to help acquire season of conquest commanders for kingdoms entering season three or later. We plan on launching a one-time event in January, 2025. Once the specific launch schedule and event dates are confirmed, we'll notify you through the community and in-game announcement. Okay. So this is really big news actually for new players. This really, I mean, this sounds amazing. The only thing that we still need to know is this part right here. What is the cost of this commander swap? Okay. Because if I'm reading this correctly, effectively, what this means is that at the end of season two of KBK, a new player will have two instances of commander swaps and we don't know what the cost is you know this cost could be um you know a, a hundred gems it could be ten thousand gems it could be fifty thousand gems i have no idea what this cost is going to be okay but it looks like at the end of season two new players will have two commander swaps where they will be able to literally just swap the progress of one commander for another commander now here's the thing though um if this happens at the end of season two um then how are they going to swap them to season of conquest commanders right like that's the part that i don't really understand like it looks like the um the intention of this is to get new players to acquire or help them acquire season of conquest commanders because season of conquest commanders are the end game best in slot strongest commanders in the game everybody knows this right and so it seems like the commander swap feature is intended to help new players get these meta commanders a little bit easier right but if this happens around the end of season two of lost kingdom then how are they going to swap into, you know, the season three and, and, and season of conquest commanders, right? That's the part that I don't necessarily understand. I'm sure that this will be a lot more clear when it comes into the game, but this is very exciting news for players who accidentally invest in, or, you know, in good faith, invest in commanders that end up not working out in the long run. Right? So if you just started the game and you saw that, you know, Ragnar original Ragnar, right? Gold key Ragnar was in marketing material and you thought he was really cool and really powerful and then you realize by season two you're like wait a minute i dumped you know 500 sculptures into him and he's not even maxed yet and he's actually trash and this omni art guy on youtube keeps saying he's bad um and now i feel bad about my investment i've just spent six months you know investing in him or whatever uh, you will be able to swap him to let's say alexander the great right or isong a and you'll just immediately get that exact same progress for that new commander so i think that this is an extremely valuable and very good event for new players to really make sure that going into the end game, they have the best possible commanders that they could be transitioning into season of conquest with the only question marks are, um, what is the cost of doing this, right? Like, is this going to be, um, so high that it's prohibitive to new players? I hope it won't be right. I hope that this will be equally available to every uh, governor, right. Who plays the game. Um, cause that would just not be fair, right. If, uh, if only, um, you know, like whales can do this. And also I'm curious, like, how are they going to be able to get their hands on those season of conquest commanders? Is, is it only going to be like season one and two commanders that you can swap for each other? Like, how does that work? I'm really curious, but on top of that, they're going to be interested introducing new ways to get season of conquest commanders as well. So all in all, like this is a huge step in the right direction. But the second component of this should get you excited, even if you're an old player, because it says if you're in a kingdom season three or later, we're launching a one time event in January of 2025. And this one time event, I suspect will be basically this exact thing but for older players and it will only come around one time and whether we get one or two swaps who knows but even still a single one-time commander swap i think will be extremely valuable for tons of players here in rise of kingdoms um this is going to be extremely good for free-to-play players and low spenders at the same time 
it won't be so valuable that it that it will completely like break the game right because if you think about you know whale players who have every commander maxed you know if they were able to get a commander reset then they'd just reset all their season two commanders and all their season three commanders right from 2020 and uh they would just sit there with you know six thousand legendary commander sculptures and they would just be able to instant max everything in the future as soon as it drops and there's no question and that would be really unfair right so this is you know extreme because because one good commander right is goes a really long way for a free to play player like instantly getting you know it swapping out you know let's say you, you're Yi song Ye, you maxed Yi song Ye a, a long time ago um now you can immediately swap him for Juge Leung right or immediately swap him for Herman Prime right like that's a huge swap that's a big deal for a brand new player right like I mean it's just it's this is super good okay so it's a one-time thing I don't know if we're gonna get one or two swaps but like this sounds extremely good and hopefully it's not super expensive hopefully everyone can be able to participate in this and i'm very excited for this i cannot wait to get rid of my sargon bro oh my god actually i'll have to go through my account and see which which commander is the one that is most um you know highest uh, probability or highest uh pr priority to reset or swap with another commander maybe i'll make a video about that let me know in the comment section if you want me to kind of tell you guys what i think about my current account and who i'll be swapping but i'm really excited to see this and this is so soon right like this is we are so close to this so please be prepared for this okay next up can we get an epic ranged commander to help us experience ranged at a lower cost this has been like a really big topic of discussion for players who want to see if they like ranged without dumping a ton of legendary commander sculptures into it here we have after the release of version 1.0.89 we plan on introducing a new epic ranged commander governors in season two season three and season of conquest kingdoms will be able to obtain this new commander by opening gold or silver chests in the tavern this is extremely exciting i wonder if this commander is going to even be viable in season of conquest right like i mean we see you know, like look okay we had when margaret when margaret and bobber first came out they were not meta they just weren't really good right they weren't um and so you know like people didn't invest in range because they just weren't good and like you know the people that did were like oh it's okay but it's like it's not really worth getting it wasn't until we got cordoba and gajamata and the synergy with gajamata and cordoba or margaret and cordoba that's when people were like whoa wait a minute the aoe on cordoba is insane the trades here are insane this is like this is wild right so i'm wondering if this is going to help move players in that direction um i personally think this is a great idea i think this is very exciting i think that you know you'll be able to effectively like if cordoba is the main thing that does all the damage you could just run cordoba with this and like run purple gear and see if it does well for you at choke points right like that would be really exciting i can't wait to see what this is um i i think this is great i think this is great for the future of the game i think this is great for players who want to see if they like ranged combat um all in all total w huge w i love to see it next up can you share your design philosophy for the next generation of commanders Ooh, this is exciting okay for the next generation of commanders our goal is to be more consistent when adding new commanders allowing you to better plan ahead this consistency covers things like whether new commanders will focus on single target or aoe skills as well as the relationships between unit types and special mechanics they're talking about like smite for infantry and things along those lines we'll also focus more on team composition particularly the variety and fun of commanding multiple troops we aim to give both new and old commanders room to work together ensuring their lasting value we also plan to experiment with commanders that bring more innovative mechanics and gameplay lastly we understand that some governors are concerned about the amount and frequency of new systems we want to reassure you that most of the major systems have already been developed moving forward we'll be cautious in balancing the introduction of innovative new systems with the cost of upgrading them ensuring that you can enjoy deeper strategic combat without feeling overwhelmed okay so there's a lot here that is like very important but also just kind of vague so it's hard to pick apart but basically what they're trying to say is that you know upcoming commander releases they want to be a little bit more transparent about like is it going to be an aoe or single target commander and is it going to have a new mechanic and how is it going to work with other commanders that are existing here so that we were not all like you know for example cav players right cavalry mains right now have been hoarding sculptures for like a year okay and and I think that they should keep doing that because I think you know hopefully the next commander cycle will be very good for Cavs but basically what they're saying here is that if they can be more transparent so that way you have the right expectations maybe you'll know a little bit ahead of time if the next commander releases something that you'll be excited in right maybe if they start to hint at like hey the next Cavs are going to also have mighty healing then you could be like okay well I'm not interested in that I'm not going to get the circle formation so I'll just invest in Ragnar Prime right like those types of things I think would be very good and how soon in advance we'll start to get that information 
information for the upcoming commanders I'm not sure I don't think that they're going to like really be leaking a ton of information ahead of the launch because you know I there still should be some mystery around it it should still be exciting and it should still be you know uh you know a hype period when new commanders get revealed but um all in all I think that this is this is very good I don't know I mean this this to me sounds like they're focusing more on making niche commanders right and I think that that was this entire ninth generation um including might I add Philip the second and I'm gonna have a, a video coming out about Philip the second very soon but all of the ninth generation is basically an optional invest right like nothing there was instant max must have meta if you were a Kraken maybe William Wallace is a must have but besides that like for regular players nothing in gen 9 was was an absolute must have and so to me it sounds like maybe they're going going more in that direction for the future right maybe they're looking more at niche commanders and commanders that maybe have synergy with existing commanders so that way your old investments still retain value while also still releasing new things and new fun things to try right we'll have to wait and see I think that there's this this still means there's probably still going to be a little bit of power creep here okay let's be real um power creep is one of the main things that gets people investing in commanders I think I'm a good example of that right like I maxed Ragnar Prime but besides Ragnar Prime I haven't invested in anything since uh Herman Prime which was January right so I've just been sitting on sculptures literally almost for a year right now 10 months which is insane to think about so I mean it is what it is I think I, I got Gorgo as well which I didn't need to because I was just bored but regardless I'm excited to see what the future of this holds and how it's going to really be that different from what we've already seen but understanding you know what these new commanders are going to do uh is very good and you know them saying that their major systems are already developed that's good I mean does that mean we're gonna get less new systems moving forward because previously it's been like every year we've gotten a major system except for this year right they've tweaked the armament system a lot this year which has been very good and they've added new formations but they haven't added a new major system this year which has been very good for the game in my opinion and so you know the fact that they're looking at this and saying well most of the big systems are already here that's amazing right now does that mean we're never going to get another new system no of course not like there's going to be something at some point but like I don't think we're going to see another like armament system come into the game right so this is very good news all in all I'm very happy to see this I think a lot of players should be happy to see this but anyway moving on it says what happened to the new remastered map will there be updates in the future answer we've been continuously testing and optimizing the remastered map in future season of conquest we'll gradually roll out remastered versions of each story following the approach taken with the heroic anthem remaster for the time being we plan to remaster the original kingdom map and the season one through three lost kingdom maps and then use remastered maps in new campaign game modes I don't know why somebody left a, a crying face here because this is great news I mean this is super good I'm gonna leave a little excited uh, a little excited emoji over here because we are finally getting the new remaster graphics right this has been a long time coming at this point it's been over a year since they first announced and revealed these new graphics so I'm very excited about this and for everybody who's like thinking oh my god like I love the new I love the way that the old map looks like don't worry when they release this after about I don't know five days you're gonna forget that it even happened I mean that 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 was my experience when I played in the remastered kvk it comes out and you're like oh look new graphics and I loved them but regardless like when you're playing in dot mode when you're fighting you don't notice it. it you literally will not think about it you'll never realize it it's actually not as big of a deal as you think uh it seems like a big deal but it's really all that this is is a big deal for new players this is great for player acquisition it's great to make the game look like a new game which we desperately need if we want rise of kingdoms to continue for the next six years right so all in all huge update major change very exciting I hope this happens instantly I hope this happens right now today make this happen right now please I need these new graphics I I'm I it, it, it they look so good they look so much better than what we have right now so please drop it on the game I'm excited let's see what the next question is is Ragnar Prime part of the 10th generation of commanders and will there be other ways to recruit him in the future Ragnar Prime is not part of the 10th generation of commanders he is a special commander released alongside the 2020 for key story king of all britain we plan to introduce other special commanders in future key stories stories so stay tuned ragnar prime sculptures will be available via other channels such as daily special offers though this specific time they will be added to these channels is to be determined okay so other special channels such as daily special offer this means that he's also going to be in like the gem rush event and those types of things maybe in alliance mobilization you'll be able to get him from that um so that's kind of how you're going to be able to get him moving forward um I don't love that right I think that like if you're going to make a special commander and then release him I mean they gave him to everyone for free right but only if you were in season of conquest right if you were in season one or two or whatever 
remember or maybe even season three i don't remember but uh, i think it was season one or two then you got regular ragnar for this current event which was super disappointing for most players i got people messaging me saying like what is this why why did they do this right um and so for those players who missed ragnar prime for this event are they going to be able to get him for free at some other point or are they going to have to buy this daily special offer you know for a special commander release saying hey don't worry you can buy him later for five dollars it's like okay um I don't know like that doesn't feel special right like there's a there's a hundred commanders in the daily special offer like that's not that special right especially for a commander that is very loved and very cool um I feel like there was just so much potential here for the, like a really cool event for Ragnar and um the fact that we got him for free amazing the fact that we're going to be able to continue to get him uh for free in other ways like I said Alliance mobilization is the first thing that comes to mind for me you'll probably be able to get the sculptures from there um very exciting stuff maybe they'll put them in the sovereign keys eventually who knows or you know I, I mean yeah there's tons of ways to get sculptures these days or maybe you know this would be one of those commanders that you would swap when you when you're in at the end of season two when they talked about the commander swaps earlier maybe you'll be able to swap your old Ragnar to Ragnar Prime and boom there you go so there's there's that right but at the end of the day like I don't know I think that this their implementation of Ragnar Prime was fine um I don't hate it but I feel like th there was just so like there was it was it was they were like sir, it was on a silver platter like oh my god here here's an amazing commander everyone loves he's super powerful like here put him in the they could have put him in expedition they could have made him a kbk reward they could have done like so many other cool things with him and then to have them be like yeah he's gonna be like in the daily special offer it's like okay cool I get fine like right like that's fine that doesn't that, I don't know so yeah that answers the question um you know what wh how are you gonna get Ragnar Prime in the future here you go uh that's that hopefully maybe maybe right um they say other channels okay other channels so that does leave the door open maybe there will be more ways to get him than than what I can see um and then what is what is shown here so I'm excited to see what those are but you know throwing out daily special offer like I don't know maybe you should maybe you should have maybe you should have said something like Alliance mobilization instead of this that way players aren't kind of like jaded about it you know what I mean anyway that's just my advice but anyway um that's pretty much it this is everything that they have said in this face-to-face -face with the developers all in all this is extremely good this was a very very exciting uh face-to-face -face with the developers we ended on a little bit of a boring note here to be honest with you but the fact that they are saying yes remastered map is coming soon very excited about that literally commander swap event coming soon ranged epic commander coming soon and by soon I mean within the next like let's say six months right like six months or less it could be even sooner than that some of these things they said January of 2025 right very exciting stuff there so love to see that one-time swap event for um, older players love to see that free passport pages for everybody love to see that all in all this entire event actually super good they're trying to fix the Imperium thing um they're making it so you can swap armaments like this whole face to face with the developers is all in all I would say this is like a nine out of ten face to face with the developers it is extremely good for the future of the game I'm very excited to see how these things pan out in real time how they actually work and how players use these new things to optimize their accounts and be more competitive moving forward I'm very ha happy about this and I want you guys to let me know in the comment section below what do you think about these changes to the game I'm really excited to hear from you guys as well and while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of Kindles players might see it and consider subscribing while you're down there we are so close to 80,000 subscribers and double check because you might think that you are subscribed but you're actually not so double check down there and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace